Welcome to this radio channel and this is part 4 of the propagation characteristics of shortwave radio and um, also amateur radio if you uh, are in the HF bands. Um, basically we started with uh, you know talking about the daytime, nighttime, we've gone into grey light DXing, we've talked about solar activity and there's another effect another change and it's the fact that the earth has seasons and that also affects the propagation and I'm not talking about weather weather has zero effect on propagation of shortwave radios if you think that weather has an effect it doesn't uh, storms or rain or sunny days does not change anything into the shortwave signals or it changes so little that it's not noticeable in general um, but there is a difference between summer and winter in propagation because the amount of sunshine is not the same because the days are not uh, the same length so it changes the propagation summer, winter and also you know, during uh, spring and the fall <coughs> so basically if you look here at this picture, you see the, the dark side of Earth and the sunny side of Earth. Notice how the pole is, the North Pole here is uh, all in the sunshine. And you can see even here a little part where it's never dark. Well, that is basically summer in North America or in summer in the Northern Hemisphere. But it's winter down in the Southern Hemisphere. Basically, we have so much sunshine in the north, and uh, the more you are far from the equator, the more you see this effect. The uh, F layer of the ionosphere, and even all the layers of the ionosphere, are just ionized much, much stronger than in the, uh, the winter time. So first effect, daytime, midday, around noon, will be almost impossible to hear pretty much any... Uh, DX stations from really far away. There are more as absorption of signals, so signals transmitted are different. Uh, where you can see this a lot also is in the 10 meter amateur band and 28 megahertz. Yeah, often in the summertime it isn't very good except maybe when you get to the edge near um, the gray line for example. But that very strong ionization has another effect. It means that when the sun sets takes a lot more time for the ionosphere to actually settle back to a uh, you know one layer weaker one layer um, uh, you know uh, region of the um, ionosphere basically and what happens is that you'll hear stations in high frequencies even many hours after darkness so it has an effect for example for here in Montreal um, in North America I can listen to Radio Australia 17840, you know, even two hours after sunset in the summer nights, like in July, for example, June, July. I'll hear Radio New Zealand 15720, you know, even two to three hours after sunset. And that's an effect of the long days, um, also helping, you know, propagation of higher frequencies even at night. Um, if solar activity is good, You'll even notice that you know some frequencies like the 20 meter ham band 14 megahertz or the 19 meter broadcast band 15 megahertz might actually even be open all night long because night is short so the um, basically the ionosphere is stronger even in the middle of the night. You'll also hear specific propagation characteristics that are interesting for example you might hear stations from Asia in North America uh, at local, you know, midnight on high frequencies for the simple reason that the signal, because it's always sunshine on the North Pole, the ionosphere is stronger, so it can actually have an effect of propagating signals through the poles. Amateur radio stations use that a lot in the summer. They want to reach Asia or, um, you know, maybe even Europe in the middle of the night they'll actually broadcast over the North Pole because of the daylight path there they'll be able to hear them on higher frequencies 
And then as we go into fall, we get to a point where um, the you know day night is pretty much equal everywhere around Earth. It changes once again the propagation. You start losing the possibility to use a North Pole because it's not in the daylight anymore. You start losing some capabilities. Shorter days means a little less of ionization. The angle of the sun is not the same on the ionosphere. So that also prevents, you know, you, you start to see that signals like uh, Radio Australia 17840 get weaker and weaker and weaker after sunset and much faster after sunset than in the summertime. Um, but you'll see increase in the lower frequencies very often and you'll see uh, better propagation and lower frequencies as we get into the longer nights. And then we get into winter, and winter is different. So here you see an image of what it looks like, the um, Earth illuminated in summer. But in the winter, basically, you have the reverse. You see that now the North Pole is in the darkness. You see that there's much more darkness here in the winter. But it's the reverse in the south. So basically, the summer propagation we had in the north uh, in December now is in the south. So Australia would enjoy summer propagation that we had in the summer in North America. And because of the very long nights, the ionosphere is not as good. It's not as reliable on high frequencies. So usually after sunset, doesn't take long for um, the maximum usable frequency to get really low. So you won't hear propagation two to three hours after sunset in the winter nights. You'll probably hear the 15 or you know megahertz band or 17 megahertz band frequencies really get lower, um, you know, weaker, weaker uh, only about an hour after sunset. So for example, in the winter, Radio Australia here uh, two hours past sunset is pretty much impossible here in Montreal. And Radio New Zealand is usually very, very weak. It's it's there, but it's very weak. Because the ionosphere isn't as good at propagating these higher frequencies at night and the winter. But low frequencies in general are pretty good. So that's the good thing about night is you'll be able to hear stations better in the 49 meter band for uh, 6 megahertz. Um, lots of amp stations will be in the 80 meter band, 3 0.5 to 4 megahertz or 40 meter band around 7 megahertz because these will propagate okay um, in the winter nights very often. Um, and then, you know, cycle starts again. We get back into spring, night and day pretty much equal. So spring and um, the uh, fall propagation are pretty much the same usually. And then we get back into winter and in summer sorry and you know cycle goes on and on all the time question you might ask is there a season that's better than the others for listening to shortwave um, i would say that the best propagation usually comes around uh, the uh, equinox so uh, march april and um, september october these are great great times usually that's the time when you'll hear um, you know, North America will hear probably Asia much easy, easier. So, for example, I hear a voice of Korea and North Korea much better, um, say, August, September, October. And then uh, maybe, you know, February, March, April. Because of, you know, the way the, the path is, the gray line, the position of the gray line and all of that. I will hear uh, Asians much better. I will hear the fire drakes, the jamming from China much better around these period of time. So that's probably the best time for DXing, I would say. Winter has one positive effect. When it's winter, uh, we hear less static crashes from all the thunderstorms around Earth because thunderstorms are much farther away. In the summer, We'll hear more crashes of uh, thunderstorms because there's thunderstorms all around us. And, you know, you hear static crashes of thunderstorms even 1,000 kilometers away, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. So there are varying propagation conditions. And you'll notice that there are frequencies that propagate at night in the summer that will not 
in the winter. Um, and the reverse is true also. You'll hear stuff in lower frequencies in the winter that you'll never hear in the summer. Because of the changing patterns of the ionosphere, the gray line positioning, the length of day and night, all of that has an effect. And it's, you know, it's very complex to understand everything. But, you know, I've mentioned some of the examples that I can, uh, that I have here, that I can hear uh, nighttime, daytime, you know, that I don't have. For example, in the mornings in the summer, I hear Radio Australia 9580, local morning, very well. But I won't hear very well Radio Australia on the 6 megahertz frequency they use. But in the winter, more in the morning, I will hear the 6 megahertz one better. Uh, and I'll hear also the 9580, but 6 megahertz will also be almost as strong. So it gives you an idea of, you know, the frequency ranges that you can try for. So as we are in mid, you know, really pretty much in midwinter right now, it means that we are, you know, in that time period where uh, slowly we'll get into spring and you'll see changes. And that's very interesting. Um, if you are, you know, uh, into shortwave and you like the stuff and you like to know more, uh, you know, every week uh, try to tune around and tune around frequency ranges that there's nothing on and listen as the weeks go by as the days gets longer in north in north uh, northern hemisphere you'll see changes you'll see that it's different and that's also part of shortwave propagation and you know with time you understand things so you know for me uh, radio australia and uh, radio new zealand at night is a summer thing and in the winter time well there's other stations that I'll listen to in the winter time that aren't available in the evenings, um, you know, to North America, for example. So winter and summer, there are some really, really lots of changes in propagation there. And uh, like I said, I'm not talking about the weather. Weather does not affect shortwave propagation uh, in a noticeable way. Weather does affect some frequency ranges, but more in the VHF, UHF range, high, high up in the f these frequencies. There are all sorts of, you know, uh, propagation changes because of that, but not in short wave or medium wave. In general, weather has little effect on these frequency ranges. If you enjoy my videos, why not subscribe? You'll be informed when the videos are online. If you have any comments, questions, maybe you want to you know, some, learn about something about propagation. Don't be afraid to ask your question. Give us a thumbs up if you like the videos and hope you enjoy this propagation series.